Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sue of Bend and Stretch with Sue, and today is day 13 of 31 days of Zen, where every single day during the month of May, I bring to you some brand new content. And in this video, because this week is all about Pilates, I'll tell you a little bit more about the origin of Pilates, as well as some of the props that are utilized during a Pilates practice both for home practice and perhaps even for studio practice. Joseph Pilates, Joseph Pilates, who founded the practice, was born in 1880 in Germany. He was a very ill and frail child who was determined as an adult to be strong and physically fit. So he grew up, moved to England, where he became a professional boxer, learned more about bodybuilding, and was even so proficient with it that he trained a detective. He then was in Scotland Yard on self-defense. He then became a very talented gymnast, circus performer, skydiver, uh, and skier. So he was now from there uh, during World War I, he was interned and he actually worked with some of the prisoners to help them with bodybuilding and physical fitness. Later on, he became a nurse uh, where he was able to help rehabilitation of patients and soldiers that were injured in the war. And he then moved to the United States later where he met his wife and began to work with um, ballet dancers where quite often Pilates is known to be uh, a practice that is um, originated with dancing. So that is where that uh, branch of Pilates came from. Typically when we look at Pilates we are talking about mat Pilates and it is a practice that he developed with 34 classical uh, exercises and throughout the week I'm taking you through that program of the various classical exercises. Since then the practice has evolved in some more modern Pilates movements as well. But today I wanted to show you some of the props that are used in that Pilates that can really help to uh, bring the more focus to the muscles that we're trying to recruit. It can also help to add more resistance and just help to create more variety, a little bit more spice to your practice. Now also, what I don't have here is some of the equipment that can be used in studio or even in home practices. So these are some of the props that uh, I often use during my own practice or when I'm working with students. And I will be incorporating some of these the following week from now, next week we go back to yoga, the following week I'll be going back to Pilates where I will incorporate some of these props in the practice. But let me uh, introduce you to some of them. There's a wide range. I recently did a video with uh, the Pilates ring, which is a ring that has, offers quite a bit of resistance. It can be used um, between the hands, between the knees, or rather thighs, uh, even between the ankles. So there's a whole host of different ways that this can be used in order to add some extra resistance and to really help you to engage the powerhouse. So that's called the uh, Pilates ring um, and or loop. There's also uh, the small Pilates ball. And this one is kind of squishy. It can also be used as a great way to massage uh, in a tune-up practice. It has a little bit of gift to it, which is really great for some of the standing exercises, as well as all of the supine, the prone, even the sideline exercises. So a lot can be done just with this. And if you don't have one of these, you can always substitute it maybe for a child's ball. Um, it's not very large in comparison to these larger ball that is often used uh, in some yoga practices as well as Pilates. So I can demonstrate some of these uh, exercises um, 
toward the end of the month as we move on with our 30 day, 31 days of Zen. So as well as um, the balls, there are um, resistance bands that can be used. Now, I've got quite a different uh, range of different ones. These are very uh, tight resistant bands, um, mainly used between the legs, but you can certainly use them for the upper body. Also, uh, they have an, their cloth with an elasticized um, kind of silicone grip inside that makes them hold on really well so they're not slipping and sliding or even rolling up as some of these smaller loop bands uh, sometimes these can kind of curl in and uh, get all bunched up which makes it really uncomfortable and these are definitely have more give to them so between the two different options and all of these based on the color is a different weight. Uh, this particular one is extra heavy and that there's extra extra heavy and very light as well so that you can gradually adjust and adapt to, as your strength develops. So uh, these large ones have got different uh, resistances. Again, uh, the color coding uh, makes it easy to identify which uh, resistance that you might be using. And also with resistance bands, all of these are looped. So there are um, some, I actually have one here, that is the same idea, it's a rubber band, but it doesn't have uh, the looping, which can make it um, more limiting in some ways, but yet more available to, or more conducive to execute other exercises. So it just changes up the variety that you can add into your practice. These uh, also have handles. I've got, again, different colors are um, able to identify the different resistance and they have the handles. So open and a whole host of different arm and leg movements that can be executed with these while strengthening and keeping the core focus. I also have um, some light weights. These are, can be used around the wrist. Sometimes I'll use them as uh, an enhancement to whatever hand weights I might be using. Uh, just to add a little bit of weight. So if I'm not ready to go up to the next level, I can kind of sneak these on. These particular ones are actually two and a half pounds. Um, they're great for the ankles. Uh, just to some of the leg raises that um, you might do um, in Pilates, whether they're sideline uh, leg raises or, or supine or even the prone ones, um, you can kind of amp up your, your resistance and your workout with those. In addition to, these are specifically uh, Pilates weighted balls, so they can be used um, also, they're only two pounds, so they're quite light. You don't necessarily want to go heavy when you're adding weight to your Pilates practice. Uh, the idea is to really uh, develop that mind-body connection by using your own resistance. So light weights is advised so that you can gradually um, improve your strength, but not overdoing, not forgetting to adopt your own body resistance. And then there are some, um, I have some, these are five pound dumbbells, hand weights. Um, they come in half a pound, a pound, uh, two, three pounds. So there's a wide range of them um, that you can use. I would say probably two to three pounds is um, really a good weight to, to work with. You don't necessarily need to go all the way up to five pounds. There are also, um, before I get into um, some of the other props here, a roller, foam roller can be used. Um, it will often be used in order to kind of throw off the stability, uh, as does the uh, small ball and the large ball. So forcing your core to work a little bit harder as well. So not necessarily in the using it for its intent, 
for rolling out muscles, but using it more as a Pilates prop. And I'll demonstrate that in a few weeks um, in one of the practices. Now there are um, a variety of sizes of tune-up balls as well uh, that can be used for just massaging out the muscles as well as spiked balls are quite common with Pilates. So the same idea as this, only there are uh, spikes and usually a rubbery spike um, all over the ball, kind of looks like a porcupine um, that you would use for massaging a little bit more intensely than this. What is great about these is that it has the rubber grip that can actually get a hold and kind of squeeze and do a little bit of myofascial releasing by that twisting on the, the skin and just grabbing it enough so that you can get the fascia as well. So the different sizes of those. And then last but not least is a thicker mat. Um, because so much is done in a supine position where if you have, uh, maybe your back is more sensitive, maybe your spine's a little bit uh, bony or even the back of the pelvis or shoulder blades. So having that extra um, cushion can be really, really helpful. Um, and I don't have it here, but certainly having a blanket uh, available to you when you're practicing Pilates might even replace a mat completely or certainly help to do some padding either underneath the knees, back of the head, or behind the pelvis so that you are well supported, well cushioned as you move through your practice. So with that, I will leave you for now. I hope that you'll join me tomorrow as we continue on day 14 of 31 Days of Zen with a total body Pilates practice. So I look forward to seeing you then. Be well. Be sure to give me one of these if you like it as well as hitting that subscribe and notification bell. And I will see you tomorrow, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Namaste.